Hi, Erwan for Motion VFX. In this video, we will learn how to manage the modular templates, but also the drop zones and how to sync perfectly your footage inside the drop zone with the sound. Let's see the final project. When you buy a modular template, you will have many components installed inside Final Cut Pro 10. Let's see where you can find all these elements. First, the main template. You will have to go to the Generators library. In the Motion VFX folder, you will find all your templates. Each template has its own ID number, which is very useful, as you will see later. For this project, I will use the template 1471. You can skim the template to preview it, and I will add it to my project. The main template contains all the animation with nice transitions. Let's add the music. As you can see, my music is shorter compared to the length of the template. It's very easy to adjust the duration of the template. In fact, you just have to trim the end of the template and automatically it will speed up all the animations in order to match with the new duration. Let's play it and see the result. The drawback of this method is that all the animations are accelerated. In order to see the acceleration, I will reduce the length a lot, like this. To fit with the length of the music, you can also think to remove some parts of the template. If you use the blade tools to cut the template, you will see that it won't divide the template in two parts. Instead, it will create two complete templates. So if you want to divide the template, you have to create first a compound clip. I will name it. I will add CC at the end of the name in order to quickly see that it is a compound clip. Now if I cut the compound clip, I will cut the animation and keep the linear timing of my template. So if you want to remove a part or change the order of the animations, you won't have any problem anymore. If you want to customize the templates, you will have to go inside the compound clip and then you will have access to all the parameters. And the cool thing is that all the changes will be available in the various parts of the compound clip. But if you want more flexibilities and have more controls on the timing of each animation, you should go to the individual component available with the modular templates. They will be available in the titles library inside the Motion VFX folder. Here you will find all the various elements for each modular template. I will give you a quick tip to display only the component you need. In the search bar, type the ID number of your template. In this case, I will type 1471. As you can see, it will filter and show only the eight components from my template. Very useful as it will simplify the interface and it will avoid me to use elements from other templates. With each modular template, you will have six independent animation plus one lower third title and one main title. I will replace the main templates by this part. Let's customize some parameters. First, I will change some titles. As you can see, any text element from this template can be modified.
Then I will add some video footage inside the drop zone elements. I will click on the drop zone icon parameter so I will be able to choose a clip like this girl standing. As there are two drop zones, I won't click on apply. In fact, here a nice tip. If you have many drop zones at the same time, you can import all your footage inside all the drop zones before clicking on apply clip. With this technique, you will win a lot of time as you don't have to click on the button each time. Here I've got my two footage so I can click on the apply clip button. At the end of this template, there are two more drop zones. I will use the same technique to quickly fill the drop zone. Now let's add a second template. On this one, the first animation has three drop zones. I will select my Flamenco Dancer keyword selection to display my footage. As you can see, depending where I click inside my browser source clip, it will change the frame inside my drop zone. The most important thing to memorize is that the frame you will select inside the source clip browser will be the first frame at the beginning of the template you are working on. The timing of the drop zone inside the template doesn't change anything. If I click on the first frame of the clip, Inside the template, the timing of the footage will be like this. If I click on the last frame, in order to fill the drop zone, the template will freeze the last frame as there are no footage left over. It is why you will get sometimes a freeze frame inside your drop zone. It will be the same if you don't have enough footage. Like this example, you will have the end of the footage, then you will get a freeze frame. Knowing that, it is more easy to anticipate which frame will appear inside the drop zone. Don't forget to look at the duration of your footage and the duration of your drop zone animation. So now I can easily select the best frame for the three drop zone. Inside the inspector, you can adjust also the position of the content inside the drop zone. You can also adjust the scale of the content. For the next three drop zone, I will quickly choose the right timing for each clip and adjust the position of each element. Let's go deeper inside the drop zone with a more complex example with the next template. With this template, I've got two drop zones with a nice distortion effect. I will fill the two drop zones with these two clips and check the result. I can see that the ratio of my video doesn't match with the distortion effect. I can easily fix this issue by adjusting the scale parameter of the content, like this. For the second drop zone, I will have a more complex problem to resolve, as I would like to sync the frame when the drumstick hits the drums at a specific moment of the music. First, I will add a marker on the music when I want the percussion. I can try to click on a random frame in the clip browser, but it won't be very efficient. 
So I will remove the video footage from the drop zone by clicking on the cross. And I will drag the clip over my template. By skimming the clip, I will search for the right frame. And I will add also a marker on this one. Now I will sync both markers to match the right frame with the right sound. So with the previous example, we have seen that the image we will select will be the first frame on the template. So I need to add content before my video. To do this, I will go to the generators and add a black solid element before my clip. Now I can select both and create a new compound clip. I will name it and press OK. You can find the compound clip with all the other media files, but depending on your project, it could be very long. Here a tip to quickly find your compound clip by using Smart Collection. On my event, I will do a right click and select New Smart Collection. I will name it CC like compound clip. I will double click on it to open the rules editor and select type. In the drop down menu, I will select compound and close it. So by clicking on CC, I will display all and only the compound clip of my project. And I can see my new compound clip. So I don't need it anymore over my template, so I will delete it. I will click on the drop zone icon parameter and select the first frame of my compound clip. And voila, you can see that I've got the perfect match between the frame and the sound. Let's check the result. With this video, you have now all the keys to manage perfectly the drop zone inside your Final Cut Pro 10 templates. To get more tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe to the Motion VFX YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.